What's going on guys? Super Insane 18 here, and I'm sure we're all tired of Snake Eyes, but I'm gonna be honest. I have not been this excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in a very long time, and that is because of what the Fiendsmith engine can do in decks that are not Snake Eyes. So today, we're gonna be showing you Tier Limit Fiendsmith. We're just going to jump right on into the profile. We have three copies of Tier Limits Rhino Heart. This is absolutely incredible. And I am going to be showing you guys a combo at the end where you can see how broken Rhino Heart actually is in tandem with the Fiendsmith package. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Of course, we have the one ofs of all of the fusion names are Shiren, Havnus, and Merly. This is just absolutely mandatory. It is the heart and soul of the tier limit strategy. We are on three copies of tier limits Cash Tira uh, because it is now a way to just mill additional cards, which the deck has lost quite a bit of given some changes we've had in the ban list over the years. And the honorary tier limit is going to also be Cash Tira Fenrir because we can use it to go ahead and search out for our tier limits Cash Tira. Onto the Fiendsmith package, we of course have our three copies of Engraver. This is a one card combo that I will be showing you guys at the end that ends you on an incredible board, so just keep that in mind. And of course we have our one copy of the Fabled Lurry, which just works very well in tandem with the uh, Fiendsmith package. We have our Keldo and our Madura. Yes, we are still playing the Shufflers because not only are they really good into opposing Fiendsmith, but you can also use them as interruptions when you have them in tandem with things like the Field Spell and a Tier Limit in Graveyard. We are on a Bestial package with two Druus Worm and a Magnemut. I just think that this is incredible for the format given that the Fiendsmith is being played in a ton of decks, and again, Snake Eye is a problem, so being able to stop the Fiendsmith as well as any of the other light monsters they might have, uh, given how the deck now functions, is an incredible way to do it, and these are just obviously interruptions as well. Uh, we are on two copies of Molcharmy Perulia. Disclaimer, play three. The only reason three are not in this list is because I did not have access to a third one, but you 110% want to play three of this card. Not only for its effect, but keep in mind it is a level four water aqua, meaning that it synergizes with tier limits as a whole anyway. So it's just really, really strong to be able to draw cards maybe prevent your opponent from wanting to overextend because they're fearing what cards you might draw. And again, being able to synergize by making fusions or even something like a Bahamut Shark is absolutely incredible. That's going to be it for the monsters. Onto the spells. We, of course, have our three copies of Prime Evil Planet Perla Rhino. This is just the main consistency piece for the tier limit strategy in tandem with the one copy of Pressured Planet Wraithsoft. That way you can search either your tier limits Cash or your uh, Cash tier of Fenrir. Um, usually it's going to be the Fenrir, but I mean, if it's later game and you have monsters on board, Fenrir is not going to do anything, so it's just another search of a tier monster at that point. And we also have our one copy of Terraforming to pair with the four field spells. We have two copies of Tier Limit Scream and one copy of Tier Limit Grief. Uh, Tier Limit Grief is actually really, really good being able to just summon and send one. Obviously, you'll get the effect of whatever you send, but even in like a really bad situation, you can send the one you're summoning, which kind of just gets you in there at times. Uh, we are on one copy of Tract, and this is another disclaimer, play three of this card. It discards as effect, not as cost, and it's a consistency piece. So in a hand where you might have something that you want to just discard, and you really want to bridge into your Fiendsmith engine, you can go ahead and grab the Engraver, or you can grab the Lurry and discard the Lurry, but mostly grab the Engraver and discard a tier name or one of your other cards that specifically wants to be discarded, and it works really, really well. And by doing that, if you have three, you'll still be able to use the engraver effect to send it and search another one, and it just really works by getting you discard engines as well as consistency pieces. We are on three copies of Forbidden Droplet. This is the card that we are mostly hoping to draw off of the Mulch Army, just so that we have a way to break our opponent's board if we are going second. Uh, we aren't playing hand traps because they just really don't synergize well with the tier limit strategy. We are on our one copy of Call by the Grave because it's just an incredible card. And then we have our Foolish Burial and our Foolish Burial Goods. Should be self-explanatory, send any of your monsters that have grave effects, send any of your spell traps that have grave effects. Really simple. We have two copies of Tier Limit Sulik. 
Uh, this is just really good being a negate as well as a consistency piece. Paired with the one copy of Metanoise, again, being an interruption as well as recursion is really, really strong. And then the final card in our deck is going to be the Trivi Karma, which is absolutely mandatory for the Fiendsmith combo that I'll be showing you guys at the end. That is 40 cards for the main deck, but again, you should be playing more with three copies of the Perulia and three copies of the Tract. You might even want to add more cards in just so that you don't brick as much. Uh, but I think that if you make those small changes, it will be increased incredibly consistent, so let's show you guys the extra. Now, for the extra, it is a little weird because we are playing a small number of fusions at only five fusions, which for a tier limit strategy might seem a little odd, but we'll go over it as we uh, explain the card choices. We have our one copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp, our one copy of Lacrima, and our one copy of Necroquit Princess. Mud Dragon of the Swamp is obviously just a very good generic fusion, and it is a mandatory part of the combo, which will allow you to end on an Omni Negate as well. The Lacrima and the Necroquip are just the Fiendsmith package, and they're really, really important and really, really good. Not to mention the fact that Necroquip is just a fusion monster, meaning you can recur it to go into something like your Dragostopelia, which is incredibly strong. And then, of course, we also have our one copy of Tier Limits Kaleido Heart. This is pretty much the boss monster of the deck. Uh, with the fact that Kit Kalos is banned and we're not playing something like King of the Swamp, we really can't afford to play the Roll Kalos because we won't have a way to make it. So you could maybe theorize with that where you play the King of the Swamp and the Roll Kalos, but I don't really think it's that necessary. Then we have our Totally Awesome and our Bahamut Shark. Uh, this is, again, self-explanatory. Being able to put an Omni Negate on your board is just absolutely incredible. Not just that, but since it also recycles waters and Rhino Heart is a water, once you use your Omni Negate, you can potentially get follow-up for your next turn. We are on one copy of Time Thief Redoer. This is a flex spot. Uh, while playtesting, there were multiple times where I ended up with like a Shiren on field and I wanted to be able to fuse, so Redoer was really the only way of accomplishing that. Um, I'm not quite sure how impactful that will be, but again, in my testing it came up. So this is a flex spot. If you find something that works better for you than this does, by all means, definitely play it. Uh, we are on our Beatrice and our Wallow as our rank sixes. Beatrice, again, is just really good with the Fiendsmith package and even better in a tier limit deck, being able to send cards from your deck not as cost but as effect and just activating a plethora of different things that you can do. And Wallow is really incredible because in a world where you don't have to make the Beatrice, maybe you already have your full combo, this acts as another interruption into literally any other Fiendsmith deck uh, and any deck that really needs to function with this graveyard as well, being that it is a quick play room removal from Graveyard. We have our one copy of Fiendsmith Requiem and our one copy of Fiendsmith Sequence. These are just mandatory for the Fiendsmith package alongside with the Moon of the Closed Heaven to be able to branch you into it if you don't already have the access. Uh, then we have our one copy of Sprite Sprint as a way to send Murley from the deck to the graveyard. Being a level two, you can go ahead and send the Murley and then just get an additional fusion. And finally, we have our copy of SP Little Knight. This is a little weird because we aren't playing IP, so we're not making it on our opponent's turn. But I think ending on this or just even making it past turn one is a really strong option. Um, but yeah, that is the extra deck. Let's show you guys that combo now. Now for the part that we've all been waiting for, that much awaited one card Fiendsmith combo that is going to get you into multiple negates and follow up. So let's show you guys how it is done. Obviously starting with the Fiendsmith engraver, we will use the effect to discard it, adding us our copy of Tract from our deck to our hand. Here we can go ahead and activate the Tract, which will search and discard. So we will go ahead and search for our fabled Lurry and discard our Lurry, which of course then activates the Lurry effect to special summon itself out to our side of the field. Here we can go ahead and link off the Lurry into our copy of Fiendsmith Requiem, which we will then be able to use to tribute and summon a Fiendsmith from our deck, in this case just another Fiendsmith engraver. Now that we have the engraver on field, we can use the graveyard effect of the Requiem. This is going to equip to our Fiendsmith, and then now we have the successful materials needed for the summon of Necroquip. So we're going to go ahead and contact fuse those away into our copy of Necroquip, giving us a level 6 on board. Now we will go ahead and use our graveyard effect of engraver, shuffling back the Requiem to summon itself back out to our side of the field. Now, you could just make Beatrice here and start playing with your tier combo, but we don't want to do that just yet because we want to extend our board a little bit more. So before we go into our tier limit side, we are going to link both of these off into our copy of Fiendsmith Sequence. 
Sequence will be able to activate its effect, shuffling back one of our engravers and our lorry, leaving a uh, Fiendsmith engraver live in our graveyard. This is the materials required for the summon of Fiendsmith Lacrima. Lacrima will be able to activate its effect on summon, summoning back out the Fiendsmith engraver that we have in our graveyard. And now is where we are gonna go ahead and make our copy of Beatrice. Now with the Beatrice on field, we can start bridging into our other plays. Beatrice will of course detach the engraver. This is going to allow us to send a copy of Trivi Karma from our deck to the graveyard, which we can then activate the effect in graveyard, banishing it to add any card that mentions Visa Starfrost in its name, which is of course going to be the tier limit field spell Primeval Planet. We can go ahead and activate the Prime Evil Planet. This is going to allow us to search for a tier limit monster. In this case, it's going to be the Rhino Heart, which, as mentioned in the profile, is the best normal summon that we have. We're going to go ahead and normal summon out the Rhino Heart and activate its effect. This will allow us to send a tier limit monster from our deck to our grave. We are going to send the Havness. Now, this can technically be Shiren as well, but I feel like Havness is probably the correct one to do. At the end of the day, as long as you're not sending Murley, it realistically shouldn't matter. Once Havness hits the graveyard, it will activate the Havness effect, allowing it to fusion summon. So we will summon using the Havness and our Necroquip Princess. So that is going to be two dark monsters with different types, meaning that we are able to summon out our copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp. With Mud Dragon of the Swamp now on field, we have two level four water monsters. We can go ahead and overlay them into a copy of Bahamut Shark. Now that we have our Bahamut Shark, we can go ahead and use its effect, detaching either material, it really does not matter which one, to go ahead and summon out our copy of Totally Awesome, meaning that we now have an Omni Negate. But we're not done yet. We do have a Link 2, which means we can go ahead and link our Link 2 plus our Bahamut Shark into a copy of Sprite Sprint, which on summon will allow us to send a level 2 to the graveyard. In this case, we are of course going to send the Murley. Murley will activate its effect upon hitting Graveyard to Fusion Summon. Using the Murley as well as our Mud Dragon of the Swamp, we can go ahead and put those back in our deck. And that is, of course, going to allow us a summon of Predoplant, or Predoplant Dragostopelia. And this is now going to be our end board, which might not seem all that threatening, but let's break it down a little bit. Obviously, we still have the negate on the Toad and a negate from the Predaplant. Toad will potentially be able to recycle uh, our Rhino Heart for guaranteed follow-up on the next turn. Technically speaking, the Sprint can also act as a bounce by detaching off of the Beatrice, but what is better is using the Beatrice to do something like send one of the Ashizu Shufflers, and the reason that that's important is because not only does that now act as Graveyard Interruption, but it also acts as a Destruction as well, because we'll be able to shuffle back the Rhino Heart. So now what we have here is four cards in hand, a minimum of three, possibly more Interruptions, and guaranteed follow-up for the next turn, because we already have Fiendsmith live in graveyard, meaning that we can just do it all again on the next turn. And there you guys have it, that is just a quick glimpse into what Fiendsmith can do in decks other than Snake Eye, and I am going to be bringing you guys an absolute ton of Fiendsmith deck profiles for other strategies as well. So if you want to see that, you know the deal, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with your friends, and as always, make sure to check out the channel sponsor, Dueling Guard. Using code INSANE18, you can get 5% off your entire order, or if you click the link in the description below, it will be automatically applied at checkout. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.